the sale of Turner Field to Georgia State for a world-class campus and neighborhood revitalization is in our hands. So is the renovation of Phillips Arena, which will keep the Hawks and the NBA downtown for decades to come. And all of this will ensure that Phillips remains one of the premier sports and entertainment venues in America. And by the way, we own it. Phillips Arena represents a tremendous investment in one of our core businesses, our convention and tourism industry, which brings 51 million visitors to Atlanta each year and makes us one of the four most visited cities in the United States of America. But more than that, more than that, it supports 200 thousand jobs of all kinds and generates 15 billion dollars in spending in our hotels, in our restaurants, in our now local businesses. It also ensures that people will be able to go to work and be able to support their families. All of this is in your hands. We don't take these take things lightly. We are steady and careful and precise. We and the Atlanta City Council are intentional. You see, Pond City Market didn't just happen. Buckhead Atlanta didn't just happen. These things were made to happen. We intended for them to happen. Just as we intend to improve the lives of folks who want a fair shot at life and a fair shape, not a guarantee of an equal outcome, but a chance to live the best version of their lives. We're not just talking about big flashy projects either. We're talking about our community, focused developments too. We work hand in hand with our partners at the Atlanta Housing Authority under the chairmanship of Dan Halpern and the leadership of Catherine Buell to build the Mechanicsville Cityside Affordable Housing Development. This first of its kind development in the Southeast is unique and special because this is single family housing with public support and it represents a new approach for our city. And I know it makes a difference when folks have an individual standalone house because I saw the dignity that came when people drove into their own driveway, played in their own yard. Under this program, people have the opportunity to rent these homes for 15 years. And if they've been good tenants, at the end of that time, they get to buy them. That's what we should be doing in the city. We have a city right here and right now. It's 131 square miles. You can fit the city of San Francisco and the city of Boston into the Atlanta city limits and still have room for a little sliver of Manhattan. Accordingly, there is no reason, no excuse, for us not to have adequate affordable housing for any teacher, any student, any senior, any millennial, any mother, any father, any family. Most of them right here in the city. Last year, when I stood on this stage, no government, not even our own, had a policy for affordable housing. Today, as I stand here before you, the city of Atlanta has a policy, Fulton County has a policy, and the Atlanta public school systems have a policy. In 2016, the Atlanta City Council demonstrated true leadership and passed an ordinance that requires developers who accept incentives from taxpayers to make 10 to 15 percent of those units available for people with incomes between 60 and 80 percent of the area's median income. Homelessness is another challenge that we're meeting head on. Last year, the Atlanta Continuum of Care saw a 6% decrease in our city's homeless population. We've seen success stories like a gentleman named Benjamin Graham, who was homeless for five years in the city of Atlanta. Mr. Graham suffered through a series of tough moments in his life. He experienced childhood trauma, he spiraled into addiction. He lost literally everything. He even slept under a bridge not far from here.
for a period of time. And after receiving assistance from our partners, he got sober and eventually started his own business. He now has a convenience store on Auburn Avenue. He sits on the board of Partners for Home, and he is here today for hard work. You have made Atlanta ascendant. Do not fear what's next. The broader future in our country may be uncertain for right now. But one thing is sure, we have been here before. Atlanta will lead the way. That's the Atlanta that I know and love. That's the tradition of the Atlanta way. You know, a few years ago in 2014, I had the opportunity to spend time with the former Prime Minister of Israel. It was actually at a dinner that was hosted by Mutar Kent. And it was a really powerful moment because a Prime Minister, Perez, talked about the conversation that he had once had with David Ben-Gurion, the father of the state of Israel. And he shared a memory uh, of the two of them walking, David Ben-Gurion with Shimon Perez. And they were talking about the state of Israel. And David Ben-Gurion said that everything that he had ever dreamed about Israel had become a reality. And the lesson that Shimon Perez took away from that was that they had not dreamed big enough. And so if you look up Shimon Perez, he literally says that our biggest mistake was that we did not dream big enough. And so when you close your eyes, when you take stock in your list of accomplishments, if your list of accomplishments is longer than your list of dreams, then there is still work to do. And so I submit that there is still work to do through the year 2017. I believe in the power of dreams. And as I close, I want to tell you why. 34 years ago, I sat in a pew at Ben Hill United Methodist Church with my mother, who grabbed me and my four brothers who did not want to go to church, to come to church with her, and gave us no choice. And that day in the pew at Ben Hill, I had a lovely high top fade, which many kids are sporting now, and none of theirs are as hot as mine. And a uh, man named Ambassador Young was the men's day speaker at Ben Hill. Cornelius Linton Henderson was my pastor. And I remember looking up at my mom, Helen, and she was excited. And I was wondering, Tracy and Chuck, why was, can we go home? <laughs> and Ambassador Young came out of the pulpit. My mother grabbed us, walked us up to him, and uh, he put his hand on my head. I got to tell you, I did not appreciate it. <laughs> I pulled away. <laughs> And she said, I want you to meet a great man. Well, back in those days, we didn't have Google. We had these red things called Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica, which my father bought us. Yeah. And anything that my parents didn't know, you had to go to the red encyclopedias. <laughs> if it wasn't in there, you were pretty much out of luck. <laughs> so I started studying about Ambassador Young. And I remember after a bit of study coming to the conclusion that I was going to be mayor of Atlanta. That was impressive to my mom. If it was impressive to my dad, I was going to do that. And so I started living my life in a way where I might end up in that position. And then when I turned 20 years old, lo and behold, Ambassador Young was on the board of Howard University with me. And so I was on that board as a student. And he used to come to the board meetings. And, and what I would do is I would get to the board meetings early, Gene. And I would move the nameplates so that I could sit next to Ambassador Young. He thought that it was happenstance, but I was there moving my nameplate in private. At the end of that year, I was getting ready to take a job in New York. Ambassador Young looked me in my eye and said, you ought to come home to Atlanta. The city's going to need a mayor like you in 20 years. What he doesn't know is that on my birthday, 
I was in a mayoral race and I was losing. And on my birthday, I was in Chicago because nobody in Atlanta believed that I was going to win. <laughs> and I'm sitting in my hotel with a cupcake, with a candle in it that Jan had brought me. And they left me in my room. The phone rings in the hotel. And he said, Kasim, this is Andy. And so not wanting to show how dispirited I was, how down I was, I did that fake voice saying, you know the one, hello. <laughs> in the campaigns, everybody's running for me. Y'all better sound good all the time, baby. No, no bad phone voices, baby. Hello, how you doing? I'm feeling great. Folks forget that Ambassador Young has the spirit of a pastor. And so he could discern that that was fake. That wasn't real. And so what he said to me on that phone that night, he said, how you doing? And I faked it. I said, I'm doing well. He said, well, uh, you got a pen? And so I grabbed that hotel pen by the bed. He said, write down this number. He said, this is the number by my bed. He said, I want you to write it down. And he said, whenever you're feeling badly, I want you to pick up the telephone. And I want you to call me. And he said that I used to do this for Martin. And in the back of my head, I mean, when Ambassador Young says Martin, I mean, he's talking about Martin Luther King Jr. And he said, uh, because I want you to be OK. He says, so if you're not asleep, I don't want to be asleep. And if you're awake, I want to be awake. And if you're not OK, I'm not OK. And then he hung up the phone. I believe with all of my heart that that was the turning point in my effort to become mayor of Atlanta. Because I thought that if a man that I had looked up to from that time thought enough about me to care about me, then, my goodness, I should get up and I should carry on. That's right. The reason I shared that story today is because fast forward a few months later, when I got the phone call to tell me that I had been elected mayor, not by much, but I only needed to be elected mayor by a vote. <laughs> it's Sitting by my side in that hotel was Ambassador Andrew Young. It had been 40 years. That's the power of a dream. The reason Shimon Perez's quote was so powerful was because it shows what a dream can do, how it can drive you and propel you on. But there's another story in that story, is we need to continue the Atlanta tradition that's of right. doing what Ambassador Young did that night. And that's to look out for one another. Yeah, that's right. It's not fancy. It's not complex. You gotta take it all in. The Atlanta that I know and that I love is really simple. All of us need to remember that we can do it on a larger scale. It's three easy statements. You pick up the phone. You call somebody. You tell them. You ask them, how you doing? And you tell them, this is my number if you need me. Because if you're not asleep, I don't want to be asleep. And if you're awake, I want to be awake. And if you're not okay, I'm not okay. That's the Atlanta that I love. That is the essence of this city. And so in my last time talking to you, as your 59th mayor, I want you to know that it has been the honor of my life to have served in this position. I believe that our future is without limit. And I'm asking you to stick with me for one more year 
because we're going to accomplish things that we have not done before. All of these things that we've discussed today are possible because of all of you. It is the essence of the greatness of our city. And when we are done, the city of Atlanta is going to take its place as one of the leading cities of the world. All because of you. It should be so, and it will be so. God bless you.